In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with closed captions and text-to-speech in the all-new Adobe Captivate. Now, I think this video is actually for old-time Adobe Captivate users like myself, who've gotten used to a way of doing things in Adobe Captivate Classic, like 2019, 2017. We've had the exact same workflow for this for, quite frankly, a decade or more. So I think this video will be less for the new people who should come to this process quite easily and more for the, uh, the old Captivate users like myself. Let me show you. Okay, so before we add any text-to-speech or closed captionings, we're obviously going to need a slide to do that on. So let's build a welcome title slide here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the add a media block icon in my toolbar on the left, and we'll select image. And I'm going to unselect any components that I don't wish to use for this particular media block. In this case, I don't need a caption, I don't need a subtitle, we're just going to have the image. Uh, there is an icon in the middle here to replace this image with something that's more appropriate for your e-learning course. Alternatively, you can also right click on this and select replace image. From here, you can select whether you're gonna be getting that image from the asset store or if it's something that's located on your system itself. In this example, I'm gonna use the asset store and we'll just scroll down until we find an image that looks appropriate here. Uh, I'm going to choose this image here and we'll select replace image. I'm going to resize this just a little bit here so that we get a larger image. But I'm also going to double click on this image to bring up the edit image window here. And we can do this, uh, of course, for the purposes of maybe changing the alignment. I want more of their heads or, or faces in that shot there, and we'll go ahead and press save once that's done. Next, I'm gonna add a text block. And like before, I'm gonna select or unselect the components that I wish to use. In this case, I need there to be a title, a subtitle, I don't need a body, and we'll add a button as well. That looks pretty good to me. Let's call this course Customer Service. And our subtitle will be, who is the customer anyway? <laughs> okay, uh, let's change our button to say begin. And I think we're good to go here. So when you're gonna go ahead and add audio and closed captions, make sure that you don't have any objects uh, like blocks or components selected on your slide. Uh, you can do that just by clicking on the film strip thumbnail or clicking on the scrap area, the gray area around your slide. Now from here, we can click on the audio icon in our properties inspector, and we'll be now importing audio or generating audio, and there's a number of places where you can get that audio. In this case, we're going to talk about generating text-to-speech. Perhaps your organization only wants to use text-to-speech, or perhaps it's there as a temporary track to be replaced by a professional voice talent later on. But let's go ahead and select Generate Text-to-Speech. Now this opens up sort of a subset of the timeline, and we can do several things here. First of all, let's zoom out a little bit so we can see more of the slide at once here. So here's a preview of what your caption looks like. Now, in the old version of Adobe Captivate, what we used to do is we would write out the text-to-speech narration, generate it, and then perhaps add closed captioning. So this tutorial is almost more for old guys like me who are used to a different way of doing this. It's actually a little bit opposite now. So now to do uh, generate text-to-speech, we need to first of all create those closed captions. So we'll just type in some text here. We'll say, welcome to the customer service online module, period. And we'll click the plus icon to add a new caption. And this will be 
press the begin button to get started. Right, simple, straightforward. And we can go ahead at this point and generate the audio for this slide. Now you can see a little preview of the waveform representing the voice here. And this is useful because of course you want the timing of your captions to kind of coincide with that. So the next sentence here, press the begin button to get started. We can uh, just grab that with our mouse, the transition between the first caption and the second, and place it just before this audio, the second sentence begins. We can also do some things to improve on the layout. Because there's a lot of text here at the bottom, you may wish to change the position of the captions. I kind of like it at the top here, because again, it, it's not gonna interfere and contrast the text there. The other thing too, make sure you select um, a font that's appropriate for the closed captions. I prefer sans serif myself, so maybe what we'll do is we'll select um, a sans serif font like Arial. And if you want to apply that to all other closed caption captions throughout your course, you can apply it to all slides or maybe just the ones on this slide here. But let's go ahead and apply to all slides there. So let's take a look at what this looks like in a browser. Let's go ahead and preview this in my default browser. All right, so there's our preview. And that looks pretty good. Our captions appeared where they're supposed to. You can, of course, collapse the play bar down to a single uh, icon if learners don't want to see that. Or you could disable it entirely if you wish. And, of course, in preview in, in the all-new Adobe Captivate, you can select full screen like this, which is kind of my personal preference. Uh, of course, desktop. Let's take a look at tablet. That looks nice. And, of course, smartphone as well. And, of course, with smartphone, you also have the option to go landscape as well. I think most people are probably going to stick with this. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let me show you, uh, while we're here, let me show you how you can turn off the uh, buttons if you don't wish to include those in your course there. So I just clicked on the TOC play bar icon on the bottom right hand corner here. And we can go over to play bar and we can unselect that right there. You also could come up with your own customized version of the play bar and turn on or off whichever controls you think are most appropriate there. So let's go ahead and close that and let's do another preview and see how that looks. Looks pretty good. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.